definition, which is anybody that I can't argue with, you're a troll. Or anybody whose humour I don't understand or find funny, you're a troll. Or anybody who's bantering and I can't compete, you're a troll. So I think, first of all, we, we really do have to define what are, the, what are the boundaries. And the law's very, very clear on this. You can use the Harassment Act, which if anybody's really, really targeting someone with malicious violence, threats, those types of things, then quite rightly, you can be arrested. Um, Article 10 of the Human Rights Act actually says that everybody has the right to an opinion and to freedom of expression. That's ingrained in law. That's the very basis of our being. And under the Communications Act, which is often what the police use to try to prosecute malicious trolls, you're actually entitled to be satirical, iconoclastic, rude, you can have banter, you can have humour, you can be distasteful or even painful, and you can have bad taste. That's perfectly legal. Uh, okay. Quite, and, uh, and quite rightly so. Yeah, oh, okay, so you, you've mentioned all those things there, but we're talking about subjects that are incredibly emotive, incredibly raw, things like the, the Hillsborough disaster. Why do you feel the need to upset people about the Hillsborough tragedy? I, I can't be responsible for what others take offence for. Um, ultimately, offence can only ever be taken. It can never be given. I, I, I have not the slightest idea what would offend your listeners personally. Yeah. Likewise, they, they have no idea what, what actually offends me perfectly. You choose to take offence. It's a, it's, it's a logical choice that you make for your own person. I think you'd have a pretty good idea, though, about what would offend someone who's maybe close to a disaster where 96 people have, have died, using that as an example. Oh, well, no, that, no that's, that's, that's a fair enough argument. But if, you, but if you don't like what anybody's saying, not just me, but what any, anybody's saying, don't listen to it, don't read it, don't listen to it, ignore it, yeah? Hard to ignore social media, though, isn't it, when things get no, retweeted? Well, when things no, get retweeted and, and things are posted everywhere nowadays, it is quite hard. If you're the subject of something, it's quite hard to ignore it. How much? How many? How many tweets by the BMP do you read? You don't. You ignore them. You throw them away. It's nothing to do with you. You, you don't even see them. But there are 13 million Twitter users in in the UK. Do you go through all, all of their tweets looking for offence? Of course you don't. All right. Well, I'm going to bring in um, my uh, my other guest, who's been the subject of some of your tweets, uh, Liverpool councillor Jake Morrison. Uh, hi, Jake. Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, so. <sighs> The argument is this is freedom of speech. What, what, do, you, what do you say to that? Well, uh, Old Holborn, who um, I'd obviously like to know his real name if he'd give her over in a second, um, is one of the most obnoxious people I've ever come across. And it's interesting to hear him say he's got a reach of uh, 7 million because the reason I approached the police about the issue I have had is because, uh, um, obviously, his followers were 7,000 people. And that was um, that caused me great frustration that he'd um, constantly posted messages since February about my sexuality. He's posted pictures of me with topless men who who are swimmers, who I went to greet in the Wave Tree Olympic Centre here, in, obviously, in my constituency. Um, and then, obviously, most recently, he um, had commented that Cyril Smith was fond of visiting schools and there's still plenty of councillors around like him, and then retweets that I was visiting Broad Green International School in Old Swan. So it was a clear insinuation that I was a paedophile, um, and his followers were 7,000. But for him to say he's got a reach of 7 million people, I had a, a, a constant stream of tweets afterwards. I still get tweets today. He's constantly retweeting me, constantly referring to me and the recent articles that have been in the Liverpool Echo. And I am having people with 10 followers, 15 followers, 20 followers, also saying that I am a child abuser and I'm a paedophile. And it's just not warranted in the slightest. I visit schools because I'm a young councillor. I was the youngest councillor in the country. I enjoy speaking to young people. And I should not feel put off doing that because it's given the impression that I like young boys, which is the impression that has been given from some of the tweets I've had following on from what old holes Holborn, should we call him, has been saying. What's your reaction to that then, old Holborn? Well, I'm, I'm not... Uh, um, OK, first of all, I've never called you a paedophile, Jake, and, and as, as you know, and as the police, of, after you ran to them, also, also told you, it's not true. But, you know, if, if, if you want to take that, that you know, particular <laughs> insinuation, I'm, I will not ask you for your motives. Yeah? Old Holborn, what is three... your name? Uh, Robert Ambridge. Robert, um, have you cooperated with Essex Police since I've made the complaint? Uh, they, uh, 
they emailed me and told me not not to bother. Oh, OK. I had an update from the neighbourhood sergeant yesterday saying that they've attended your house four times and you haven't been there. Well, I don't live here, so that's fair enough. <laughs> anyway... So, uh, oh, no, no, no. So there's a difference between they've visited you and you're not there, you've moved out, or they've said don't bother. What is it? Well, they haven't visited me and, uh, and they said where, don't where, bother. Where, where are we up to with Essex Police? Are you going to cooperate with their investigation if you're saying they've said don't bother? No, I'm not, no. OK, so so free speech is not necessarily the case then, is it? Because police wouldn't investigate if it was merely free speech. You've crossed the line on this occasion, and I believe you've crossed the line on many other occasions as well. 96 innocent people from Liverpool and the nearby areas died at a football match, which they were completely innocent in. And you make a complete mockery of it on a, on a, a, a number of occasions by saying that Liverpool people should stop charging into events because they're going to crush each other. You tweet as a friend of mine called Scousma, who you're well aware of because her daughter has autism, and you said, oh, when, is she, when, when, when is she going to pop out the next mong okay. is what you come out with, Robert. Oh, OK, uh, Robert, I'll get, get, come, yeah. come back on that then, please. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if you don't like my tweets, Jake, don't read them. Don't I don't make like them. Oh, yeah, Twitter has, has a function. They've, in, they've introduced a function for exactly this particular reason, yeah? That if you don't like what any, any, anybody's saying, you can block them. OK, yeah? so I did that. The, I did oh, no, that. No, 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 Robert, I won't hold on. I did that, and then you got onto my Facebook and you started speaking to my friends on my status there, right? OK, so there's that one. Then also, even though I do block you and even though I do mute you, your 7,000 Twitter followers can also still see that you've tagged me into something. So I have blocked 250 people in the past week alone just because you tweeted the link from the Liverpool Echo. So even yeah, though I block... No, 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 Robert. Even though I no, block no, no, no. you, I still have these comments yeah. constantly right. that I am a child yeah. abuser right, and it's unwarranted. Go on, Robert. Right. Jake, we live in a free society, yeah? You put on public social media whatever you like, yeah? I am perfectly entitled to retweet what anybody puts on public social media. If you don't like that, you can you can also set a private setting so nobody but your friends can see it, yeah? Well, of don't course, come of course. To me screaming that I'm not allowed to read what you put on public media or comment what you put on public media. You are a politician. You should expect criticism. Uh, so you can't it, expect criticism. is criticism if is criticism that I am a paedophile? Is that just is that warranted criticism? criticism. If you can't accept criticism, don't go on public media. Is please. that I am a no paedophile warranted it. criticism, Robert? Oh, I beg your pardon? Is that I am a paedophile warranted criticism, Robert Ambridge? I have never called you a paedophile. So will you cooperate with Essex Police's investigation? N no, I will not, because they have no... If you've no done case, nothing wrong, they... then surely you will cooperate with an investigation. They told you quite clearly that the CPS are not interested. This is the second time, Jake, that you and members of End the Insult, they have a massive 89 followers, have tried to have me arrested. You failed twice. Now, technically, under the Harassment Act of 1997, that in itself is harassment, and I could call the police on you. I don't. It's social media. It's Twitter. Man up a bit. It means nothing. If you're going to run to the police every time you read a comment on the internet anywhere that you don't like, you're going to be very busy and so are the police. Okay, okay, Rob, let's, let's look at your man up comment and not particularly uh, re relating to Councillor uh, Councillor Morrison, but in particular you say man up and, and I'll refer back to Hillsborough and, and James Bolger, these kind of topics, you can't really tell anyone to man up, can you? Well, hold on a second, um, let's, 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 Let's actually go back 30 years. Liverpool used to be the utter hub for the UK of comedy and satire. You were famous for it, yeah? Comedy clubs in Liverpool were heaving, and now nobody dare say a word in case somebody else takes offence. What happened? What are, we, what are we actually heading for here? A silent society where nobody may comment on anything in case somebody else takes offence at it, and in Jake's case, calls the police. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to put my foot down here. If we, we take that route, we're going to end up with licensed comedy clubs where you're going to have to sign disclaimers when you go in in case the comedian says something that might offend you. Every
everybody can take offence at anything. I can sit here and eat a pork chop and guarantee that one billion people world, worldwide will be offended. What do I do? Not eat that pork chop? No. We've got to realise in this society, stop taking offence, stop playing the victim, because victimhood in this country is very well rewarded, and quite literally, man up a bit. It's Robert, only Twitter. In this city, a two-year-old boy in 1993 was brutally murdered by two ten-year-olds. Um, it, it touched the nation, it touched the world, and, and it obviously hurt Denise Fergus incredibly much, and I meet with her regularly, as you well know, and you tweeted with delight the other day to find out that I'm a, a relation of hers, although I don't yeah. see how that makes any difference. But her son was killed by two young boys, uh, one of the most horrific acts that has ever happened in this world. There was a count set up in February this year, just before James's anniversary and before his birthday, um, mocking his death. There was song lyrics posted um, about how he was killed on a train track. Then obviously I had issues as well with posting a picture of my two-day-old nephew and the John Venables account also said they were waiting until he was two to kill him as well. But putting that aside, you then tweeted um, LMAO, which I can't elaborate on what that means, but you tweeted that LMAO, that Liverpool was up in arms about the John Venables accounts. So you, you were mocking that we as a city and, and Denise's family and people who were, who were touched by this issue were deeply offended by the fact that someone would pretend to be a 10-year-old child murderer. Jake, once again, this is, this is your in, in interpretation of what you think happens. It isn't, yeah? I've done 130,000 tweets on well Twitter. Yeah? If you're going to take offence at a couple of them, then feel free to take as much offence as, as, as you like. Between you and me, you're desperate for media coverage because you want to get re-elected. Re so you're looking for campaigns that will bring you maximum media coverage. Hence, we are talking. Fine, if you want to campaign on a shut-down free speech, close Twitter, ban retweeting and arrest people platform, I guarantee you I'll give you as much, much of your publicity as you want. Um, right, well, I think we'll, we'll, we'll draw it to a close. I mean, w what I would say, well, I'll, I'll ask you, do you think um, after what you've heard over the course of this interview and also what you've heard recently regarding the offence that people have taken, w would, would you alter your stance? Would you maybe tone down some of your tweets? Would you not tweet about certain topics as a result of what we've discussed? I'll, I will quote Evelyn Beatrice Hall at you. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say. And that in includes Jake's. And I hope you will cooperate with the Essex Police investigation. I won't. But best of luck. Right. Uh, thanks very much for, for coming on. No problem. Bye now. Bye-bye. So there you go. Uh, we've got a statement here from Essex Police. Essex Police is investigating the circumstances surrounding an allegation made by a man from Liverpool who had been offended by a series of homophobic tweets purportedly made by a man who was last known to be living in Braintree. Officers were contacted by Merseyside Police on Thursday, May the 1st.